Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I've got an interesting update for you today. We are going to be unboxing, in general, the Voron V0. This is not the new 0 0.1, which was just announced a couple days ago, uh, maybe a week ago, I think, by now. Um, but this is the original 0, 0.0. I ordered this from Formbot, and it actually got here, I want to say, in about a week. It was actually pretty quick. Um, they did have a I think for me it ended up being about an 11 day lead time so they can source the parts and everything. Um, but other than that, shipping uh, from China actually came pretty quick. So I'm excited to try this thing out. Very small build volume Core XY. It's a 120 cubed with a Core XY system on it. Well, let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what this is all about. Some decent pet. Oh wow. Whoo! <laughs> Yikes, that is one smelly package. Oh wow, geez. Um, so I'm not talking like feces kind of smell, but like the really strong smell of solvent or glue. And I mean very, very strong. In fact, give me a second, I have to go open a window. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Yeah, buddy. All right, uh, good thing I have a window literally right here, about a foot and a half away. That is a terrible smell. Um, I don't know if it's what they used in packaging, if it's a component, if something is leaking. I don't know what the deal is, but whew, this stuff really smells. That's bad. Oh, it's even stronger when I open it up. Yikes. All right. Um, so I'm not going to go over every single component. I'm going to kind of gloss over what's in here. Wow, that's a strong smell. So we have some PTFE tube. Um, looks like to be about a meter or so. We have the uh, quick fuse for the bed, which needs to be mounted on the underside. This is the heat pad. This is a 110 volt, 100 watt, super thick wires. Man, look at this thing. I might have to do something about that. I might even make the transfer to a DC bed. Um, Man, that's a lot to work with. And it's no wonder they said it probably wouldn't fit in the drag chain. That's why. That's, <laughs> that's huge. Uh, okay. We have a bag with, oh, what's this? Oh, <laughs> Tiny magnets, uh, which will probably be used for the doors. Uh, that's nice to have. I'll put that over here. We have a bag with parts. And as you can see, each of the bags is labeled with what's in them. And that's cool. Uh, rather than just throwing the parts in unlabeled bags, everything is uh, labeled very nice and clear. They're not just written on with a permanent marker, but everything is clearly labeled with uh, printed labels on the bags. That's nice to see. I like that. Uh, we have some more electrical connectors, so obviously there's going to be some custom wiring that needs to be done. Actually, a lot of custom wiring. Uh, motor drive cable. This is, looks like just cabling. We're gonna end up using this for a few different things. Um, this is three wire, so red, yellow, and black. Um, not off the, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what that's for. We'll figure it out. Uh, we have a little plastic tub here, and this has all of our gears and uh, drive pieces for the pocket watch extruder. Uh, nice to have a little tub with them rather than just throwing them in a bag. Here we have a uh, air inflated direct or uh, threaded E3D V6 hot end, uh, which happens to have the orange cover on it, which is cool because my parts are going to be orange, but I'm going to have to change out the uh, the nozzle on this for a different one. I already have that planned. Uh, more electrical connectors, and these are what look to be plastic. I'm assuming they're plastic standoffs uh, for M3s and more. Uh, JST connectors, power cord, everyone knows what that is. Let's move this so you guys can see more what's going on here. We have Kapton tape and, I'm oh, sorry, not Kapton tape, uh, 3M double-sided tape, <coughs> excuse me, and then what looks to be 
foam so that we can seal some of the parts together and they don't vibrate. It makes more of a, an actual airtight seal with the acrylic side panels, which are right here. Um, we'll get that in a minute. Power supply, this is an LRS 124. It's a very slim 100, uh, 100 watt 24 volt power supply from Meanwell. Good to see. Uh, power switch, which is simply your uh, AC power in uh, with a switch in the middle so that you don't have to consistently plug and unplug the power cable from the back of the unit when you do. Uh, hot, in, hot melt inserts uh, for the, I'm assuming like the top hat and some other things. Uh, bed springs. More extruder parts. Uh, this is probably the belt for the Z drive. Very, very small piece here. Uh, this is the main belt that gets used in the core XY system. Uh, up top for the X and Y. Here is thermistor piece, a uh, small thermistor piece for the V6 and a couple connectors and jumpers. Uh, bearings, heater cartridge, standard heater cartridge you'd find with any V6. We have nylon braided sleeving. Uh, we can use that to clean up some of the wiring. Drag chain. More wire connectors. These are the four little rubber feet that will go on the bottom of the printer that uh, give the vibration resistance and everything. That mounts to the bottom. That over here. This is this is the solid state relay. Uh, I don't believe this is what it was pictured. I'll, I'll be able to show you guys when I take it out. Um, it's just a circuit, a bare circuit board with five terminal connections and a uh, resistor in the middle, and this gets mounted in. It's not what was pictured in the uh, in the build guide and everything, but still, uh, that should work. Uh, more uh, more bearings that are in here. Looks like one of the seals might have popped off. Uh, you can see right up here in this corner, looks like one of the seals popped off of one of them. I'll have to check that. Uh, they all look to be intact, but of course I will go over everything before I end up putting it together. So uh, here is the buck converter, which I already have a ton of. But that's all right. So 24 volt down to 5 volt. This is what's going to power the Raspberry Pi. What we got back here, more bearings from NSK. I'm going to leave that in. So we have <clears throat> here are NEMA 14s. These are extremely small steppers. And I want to grab another stepper for you real quick, if I can find one quickly. Okay, so this is a NEMA 14, this is a NEMA 17. Why don't you look at the size comparison here? Let me get them up top. That's your size difference, much smaller, which is good because we don't need something with this much torque in a Core XY this size. There's not much to throw around. I think the 0 0.1 did upgrade, but that's another thing. Um, and you'll also notice this particular 17 is hardwired. The others have a 4-pin JST that's much smaller. This has a uh, largely much wider, uh, I believe this is 6? Yes, 6-pin six extra wide connector, uh, which is what we had over here. So different hookup. But um, I do like the idea of the smaller motors. This is my first time with a NEMA 17, or uh, NEMA 14, sorry. All right, so here I'm not going to go over all the pieces, but we do have a bunch of acrylic. And it looks to be that these are three millimeter acrylic panels, which is what I was sent. I didn't get the chance to ask the question. Um, I did have someone else that's interested in this ask me what size uh, what thickness the acrylic panels are. Apparently they are three millimeter. That's what I got here. I don't know if that ships with everyone, but mine are three. Got it here. Uh, Z motor, or I'm sorry, Z axis uh, lead screw here with, and that's really nice. It has a Delrin anti-backlash nut uh, already installed on it, which is very nice, actually, because I was going to buy one of these, 
and uh, it turns out I don't have to. So I'm pretty sure that's Delrin. Um, it might be anodized alum uh, brass or aluminum something in black. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks like Delrin to me. So uh, moving on, we have the Mix 6 aluminum build plate. This has the uh, magnetic part to it. In fact, this is the magnetic part on it. Did they send? Hang on a minute. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so check this out. So there's two plates here. One is a smooth PEI, uh, which I'm assuming is facing down. It's also spring steel and has its own magnet, which is cool. This one looks like it has smooth PEI on one side. I don't know if you can see this here, but this side is textured PEI on the other side. That's cool. So that's one. And then over here, we have a second one. Again, this side does not look treated like this one does. You notice there's a slight difference. This gun, this one seems to have smooth PEI. This one seems to have its other side untreated. But both of them have the textured PEI on this side. And both come with their own magnets. So, uh, two plates. That's actually very cool. Not what I was expecting. And here is the Mix 6 aluminum plate. Uh, it is covered. That's very nice. It's pre-drilled. And the downside with this is that this build plate does not have the tap. Uh, I don't know where I put it. It's somewhere in this pile over here. Um, does not have the tap for the, uh, the fuse that goes on it uh, to keep the build plate from overheating as a safety measure. That's not built in. Um, so you are going to have to drill and tap that part in yourself. Uh, just a heads up. This looks to be a 5 millimeter thick. I'm pretty sure it's 5 mil. Uh, 5 mil thick uh, aluminum plate. It's got some decent weight to it, um, but shouldn't be a problem uh, installing this and keeping it running, keeping it flat, all that. Now I'm not going to take out every single one of these parts. Uh, because I do want some semblance of being able to keep things together. Um, so a couple of switches. These are probably going to be for end stops. Um, not quite what was advertised. Um, I was expecting something a little bit different, and I may change these out at a later date. Uh, but these have the paddles on the ends. The ones I was thinking uh, don't have the paddles. They just have the switch on the inside, um, which I can probably do that to this. I'll just take the paddles off. I'm not sure but something to think about. It's just one less, one less piece to vibrate and make noise. So we have our 30 millimeter fan here. This is the park cooling fan. And we have two uh, 3010 fans, not 4010, but your 3010, even smaller uh, radial fans here. That'll be for the layer, layer cooling. Below that we have MGN what they say, MGN9, I think it was? Yeah, and they're all in vacuum pack bags in here. Uh, we have the rest of our motors on this side. We have Raspberry Pi 3. This is, I got the 3B+. Plus. Um, they were unclear which version they were going to send. Turns out to be a B+. Plus. Here is the motherboard, which says this is going to be an SKR Mini E3 2.0. And because I want to check and make sure that's what I actually got, let's go ahead and open this up. All right. Little thing, you do the rubber ducky. SKR Mini E3 2.0. Perfect. That's exactly what I needed. I will check the board for physical defects uh, a little later. I just want to go through the unboxing for you guys right now, and we'll get to that another time. 3B+, here are the size of the, <laughs> these are the size of the aluminum extrusions. This is extremely small. And man, it's so, <laughs> it's so much, look at that, you can barely even see it, look at that. <laughs> um, definitely the smallest extrusion I've ever used. These are, I believe, 200 millimeter long each, 
um, and there's a complete set of these. These look to be, as in right here, you can tell pre-drilled. Um, they are pre-tapped, so they were drilled. They were drilled and tapped, and then colored, uh, because the coloring or the the inside of the threads on the tap are still completely black. They, if this were tapped after coloring, those would be shiny like aluminum, like you kind of see here. There's a little bit of scuff mark on the side, um, but uh, yeah, drilled and tapped and then colored. So whether or not that matters to some of you, that's just wanted to let you guys know that. There's a couple other smaller pieces. These are just belt drive uh, gears and whatnot. And one extremely small uh, aluminum extrusion. I'm not sure what that's for. I think I may, might be part of the bed. Let's see. There's got to be more below this. So, Oh, no, maybe not. All right. Now, well, let's get this out of the way. So it looks like... Yep. So all the rest of our extrusion and everything is underneath here uh, in a relatively thick packaging. And that's it. It's uh, all in here. So we have Z motor, X motor, Y motor, and extruder. So probably X, Y, Z, and this is your extruder. Your small one is the, uh, is the extruder motor because there's really no, it's geared, so it doesn't have to be uh, high torque. So that is the unboxing for the Voron V0.0. Um, over the next couple weeks I will be assembling this thing and hopefully get it put together in enough time for MRF 2021. Um, I will be there for about a day. I have other plans so I can't stay for the second day. Um, but I will hopefully have this and two of my other printers ready to go uh, so those of you that are attending can get a chance to see what I've been working on, maybe get some ideas. Um, I might go talk to some of the other guys. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tim from TH3D is going to be there. He's the one that I know the most, so definitely check him out as well. Um, there are going to be some other parts that I'll end up buying for this, um, and I will probably be going to him first, um, just because I trust his company, his his values and everything. Um, I tend to find him the best person to work with first as my first choice. So with that said, I uh, hope you guys get an idea what comes with this particular uh, kit. This is from FormBot, and I'll put the link down in the description below. Um, if you have any other questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I will try to answer everything that I can. And as far as a build log, um, I will probably do a couple update videos. Um, at more of a walkthrough than an actual build guide um, because I'm probably going to be spending more time trying to figure out the building manual for this than actually uh, is worth doing on camera live or trying to make a video out of it. So uh, if I come across any hiccups or anything that I think I need to point out, I will let you guys know. But uh, yeah, any questions let me know in the comments. I'll answer what I can. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys hopefully pretty soon, if not at MRF 2021. Take care, guys. Have a good one.